Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And um, everybody is already aware, very much aware, Kursk, Russia, another base as well, airfield struck inside of Russia, uh, delivering a heavy blow to the uh, Russian Federation and also so deep within Russian territory. Uh, the Ingalls Russian Air Base there, or Ingalls Russia, where the second one was done on, on uh, December the 5th there. Uh, we're seeing all types of this coming out of Russia. Uh, and of course, Russia has already retaliated uh, for these particular attacks that have, that have taken place inside of Russia, uh, but uh, not without, uh, you know, the serious consequences that comes with it. Now, the thing, though, that the West is not telling you, and of course, everything, the blame is being put completely on Ukraine, or I should say the success that the way Ukraine would really look at this, that they have attacked a Russian air base, two of those successfully with an unmanned drone inside of, uh, uh, inside of Ukraine. Now, that being said, uh, the, let's let's go to what the truth of this news really is. There, uh, it it definitely is not Ukraine. And just like when in one article here, they're talking about. Let me just see if I can find it real quick. Um, I think it was. Well, I don't think I have it right here in front of me as of yet, though. Uh, I don't have it up here at all. They were saying that on Monday that uh, that they had knocked down 40 missiles of Russia already. And uh, so basically Putin's having a very bad day is the way they put it. Now, but the truth of the matter is, is that it was not Ukraine that hit those bases deep inside of Russia. And in fact, when I got, uh, got in touch with some people in D.C. today, uh, they were really, really upset because they were talking about how that this situation that has happened inside of Russia is only pushing Russia uh, to try to get Russia to attack the United States with nuclear force. Uh, you know, the Russians are not stupid, although they might say, oh, Ukraine did it. Russia knows good and well that Ukraine does not uh, possess the capability nor the technology uh, to be able to carry out a strike that deep inside of Russia. Uh, you know, it was something that was done by, uh, oh, we'll just say NATO members. And of course, uh, we can't say who that is, but the United States did send in a large military shipment of, uh, of military equipment to a particular country there neighboring with Ukraine. And Russia knew about that shipment of military equipment there, but Russia was not anticipating that, that a certain country would, would so rapidly use that weaponry to strike inside of Russia. Uh, and they did. And Russia knows fully well who actually carried out the strike. Now, the very alarming thing, though, that they're not telling you, too, is that, uh, and let me just see if I can pull up maybe, oh, here's the here's a, here's a aerial footage there for you just to see there, uh, that particular base there. Uh, but let me real quick, I want to see if I can't, uh, let's see, put up Russian uh, subs uh, coast U.S. We have right now off the coast of the United States, Russian submarines, uh, and of course you have this one right here just, just popping up here. November 12th, of course that's 2019. I uh, don't know if they got anything on the latest thing there. Uh, we'll just go back to the top there because it mainly just kind of shows the, the Russians there uh, near our border. But Russian subs are within striking distance with nuclear capable weapons on board. Uh, it was told to me that Russia has also increased their propulsion systems of those missiles. Now, these are not supersonic, but they have increased the propulsion systems and that these missiles very easily uh, could, um, could actually call, uh, you know, hit the United States and we would not be able to shoot those nuclear powered missiles down. And even what was more alarming than that was that I was told that uh, it appears to be 
that those that are wanting to bring about the New World Order are intentionally pushing Putin into the corner to force his hand to use nuclear weapons on the United States uh, in order to get the United States drug into the war deeper and then also to cripple the United States to help bring about that New World Order. Now, don't forget, Israel will be the head of the New World Order. And so I asked the question, well, if we're planning, if they're planning on taking the United States down, because then it was followed up by, then Russia would have to be taken down as well. I said, well, if the United States is destroyed, who is going to take Russia down then? If both the United States and Russia have to go down in order to bring about a New World Order, who's going to bring down Russia? Well, I was told there is a two-stage plan for Russia. One is going to be after the United States has been hit and devastated. Then they're going to take with Russia. They're going to totally cut them off economically on every trade there is, on every corner there is. And then on top of that, uh, they've got China has already agreed to work with these New World Order pundits there. They have been in agreement secretly that they don't even want the Russians knowing this, but they have been promised territory. They have been promised to be the new uh, superpower police of the world. And so the Chinese have agreed to go along with crippling Russia and forcing those sanctions on Russia until Russia totally caves in. Not to mention, while Russia is in a battle with the U.S. and, of course, with Ukraine already, Russia will be depleting a lot of its own armaments. So it would weaken itself to a point to where China would have very little obstacle in taking down Russia if they had to deal with Russia in a military way. But it doesn't look like it's going to be that way. Just bring Russia to their knees in order to get the New World Order process going. So this is where we're at with these things. And uh, I'll also be doing a video here. I'm not going to do it on this particular uh, particular broadcast tonight, but I've also been told about some very heinous, uh, uh, sinister plot here in the United States. Uh, uh, I know that I've been asked quite a bit about things that are going to be happening in January. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about that. I'll probably load that over on our Patreon channel. And speaking of Patreon, uh, I am going to be loading the video here also on uh, through iConnectFX, it will be loaded here uh, to YouTube on our channel here. But I have recorded the video. Uh, in fact, let me just see if it's still processing. It got stopped again. I run into that a lot um, uh, where this happens there. But I have done the video where I am breaking down uh, the, the things that Mike from around the world did in that recent broadcast that he did. Uh, I'm going very deep into this. I'm gonna. Be, it'll be on Patreon for the first day or so, and then we'll move it over here to Israeli News Live. But it has to be done through iConnectFX, though it can't just be loaded directly in Israeli News Live because there are very sensitive things in this video that uh, that could maybe possibly can't say for sure could cause some problems. But um, but at any rate, there. The other thing I wanted to share with you guys, though, and, and I'll go into like I said a separate broadcast on this. Uh, but I will just let you know, uh, come the end of the year, there's going to be total shortages on some key items. Cat food is one. More importantly, though, is going to be baby formula. And a lot of these things, and I'll go into it, like I said, on Patreon there, are being done intentionally. There's going to be a lot of food products, animal products, everything you can imagine are going to be disappearing. Uh, they're getting ready for this new world order, and they're getting ready to cause some very serious pain for Americans. So I can't encourage you enough. Be thinking about these things, and I don't want it to be a fear factor. I want it to be logical that we think about these things, pray about these things, you know, but especially if you have a baby or something like that. Uh, and keep in mind, besides um, uh, baby formula, practically any baby can use goat milk. Uh, that's normally what you have to go to when you can't use baby formula. And they also sell powdered goat milk as well. Walmart does. Uh, so you can get the powdered goat milk just like you'd get a can of baby formula. So if nothing else, maybe stock up on that. It's probably a little cheaper than baby formula. But, uh, you know, just, just keep those things in mind, friends. 
Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Oh, also one other thing too, real quick in Donetsk, uh, the uh, Maria Perogova was among the uh, uh, several civilian casualties following a recent heavy shelling on the city of Kiev, uh, or excuse me, shelling of the city by Kiev uh, in the Donetsk region there. And uh, they're mourning her death there. Uh, she was killed. Unfortunately, this is the other horrendous thing about uh, Ukraine. They definitely shell the cities. And, uh, and I really wish I'd not uh, lost this one video. I was going to share it with you the other day. It was a lady there inside of Ukraine, and she was near, I think she was actually in Kyrgyzstan, uh, uh, Kyrgyzstan and, uh, and she was openly saying that the Ukrainians at night were shelling civilians to up the casualties to, get, to garner more support for Ukraine and their war against Russia there, and to blame the, uh, the, the, the uh, Russians for those casualties. Uh, I hear that over and over and over, and it's horrendous to hear about that, but what do you expect? In fact, I want to share something else with you uh, that, is, that is alarming to me. I actually got a, a, a message today from a good friend of mine uh, who lives in Ukraine, not in the Russian backside, and as far as I know, I don't think uh, this individual is Russian either. Uh, but he definitely is understanding of both sides of the conflict. But I had a question for him. I was looking for help for a friend that I had there, and uh, uh, but the friend that I was looking for was uh, Russian descent, and so you know he was definitely warning me. Definitely don't let him come to Ukraine uh, because he says here just to give you an example. Uh, he says, uh, you know, his, his children uh, had to go to a tutor. And he said that the security forces, Ukrainian security forces, uh, with uh, the police, they, they were going from door to door in the apartment building, uh, banging on the doors for the pe people to open up. And when they opened up, they were searching their smartphones and they were looking through their contacts, their call logs, their different, uh, uh, you know, uh, th things they have like telegram chats, things like that, subscriptions to find any what they called forbidden war related uh, information. And of course, the friend of mine said my phone was clean, so there was no problem there. But he said then they searched the phone of the tutor. And in there, there, were, there appeared to be calls that went to Russian numbers. That really should be no surprise. 40% of Ukrainians are Russian descent or have family living in Russia, right? Says they started asking questions and even photocopied screens of her phone. After having searched our phones, they asked if we knew any local religious organizations or people, believers, who support Russia. We were supposed to report such people. Imagine that. That sounds like Nazi Germany and the Gestapo coming by. Uh, friends, I, I, I am totally in shock. Maybe I shouldn't be, but I'm in shock of the atrocities that the Ukrainian regime that's being also uplifted by America. It reminds me of the white helmets over in Syria, right? running around Syria, acting like they were saving lives, but then we get photos of them beheading people, things like that. You know, by day they were the angels, by night they were the murderers. Think about it, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your support of our broadcast. Don't forget our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, also, our Patreon channel, the links to that. And, and, and one thing you really want to consider, especially with all this calamity coming up, and I'll just quickly mention this, haven't talked about it in a while, the EMP shield. Um, definitely, if God lays it upon your heart to do so, get an EMP shield. Okay, definitely get an EMP shield. And when you do, uh, don't forget, and I don't know, maybe they got some specials going on right now. I have no idea there. When you get it and you want to add something to the cart there, I'll just kind of give you an idea right here. You add it to the cart. You go there, don't forget the INL50 coupon code. You apply that. 
This here is to protect against EMP attacks. It's to protect against lightning strikes, all those type things. But when you do the INL 50, they give you a $50 discount. You proceed to the checkout, drops that price from $389 to $339. If you order more than one item, they're going to give you 50 bucks off every time you use the INL 50 code. So think about it. Uh, we're in for some very serious rise, and the threat of an EMP strike gr grows daily, grows truly daily. Get it for your car, your home, whatever you might need it for, your solar panels, your generator. I mean, they got it all, even, even ham radios. I would think if you got it on your house, you wouldn't need it for your ham radio, but I don't know. Listen, I have no idea. Maybe the antenna or something has something to do with that, so... Uh, I don't think they would just sell it to sell it. So I think there's a reason behind that. Uh, so you might want to think about that if that's part of your um, your survival package, we might say. Anyway, again, Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening, guys, and God bless you.